in against them. Brilliant tactic. Continue. But I agree with him in what he said in August of 2008 regarding marriage. Here's what he said. He said, as for me, a Christian, marriage is a sacred union. God is in the mix. Mr. President, I agree with what you said then. It's what you say now that I have to take issue with. You see, the president said that the basis of his belief in marriage between a man and a woman was his Christian faith and the fact that God was in the mix. If it is God-centered, we ultimately believe that in order to live the life that we live, we have to do it within the context and the moral absolutes by which have been established by the supreme holy God of the universe. It is not a theocratic government, but it is a government that our forefathers so understood that in defining for us their declaration of independence from a country of tyranny to become a nation of freedom, they said that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all of us are created equal and are endowed by our Creator with these absolute rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Government does not give us our rights. Government only has the responsibility to preserve and protect the rights that God gave us. That's the order. All right, freeze it for is important. This is a preamble to a conversation. He is establishing a premise here. And it is important to establish this premise because you're dealing with people who believe it is in government in whom we live and breathe. If they can't get by, they can't survive unless government says so. The Constitution makes it very clear that the ultimate authority in our system of government is not a Supreme Court, nor is it a president, nor is it 535 legislators. The ultimate authority, the people, bound together by the document of the Constitution, which preserves it. In over 32 states where the people have decided this issue, they have decided to affirm traditional marriage. Now, a few legislatures have taken a different course, but when you hear that the trend is moving, keep in mind, it is not a trend of the people. It is a trend of the courts. When people in black robes believe that they are superior to the vote of the people, we are living with the greatest heresy of our time, and I'm talking judicial supremacy. There is nothing in the Constitution of the United States that gives the judicial branch the right to consider themselves above the people, above the Constitution, above the executive, and above the legislative branches. Freeze it. One of the reasons why you've heard me use the phrase, do you believe our founding fathers intended for us to be governed by men who make laws that we did not elect? Do you think that was their intent? No, that is the definition of tyranny, or as Huckabee calls it, a heresy. Your biggest weapon. Look at any freedom or liberty that we had from life to private property rights to guns, every, and now even taxation with Obamacare and that ruling at the court two years ago. Every liberty and freedom they've taken from us the last 50 years has its origins or its climax in the courts. The courts have either played a role or were the role that was played in order to circumvent the Constitution. I don't care what somebody's Heritage Foundation score is, what somebody's score at Freedom Works is, those are great institutions and organizations. But if we're going to sit there and just let the courts go unfettered as we have for a generation, have we not learned that anything good these people do, they'll just, the other side, the, the Marxist will just go to the courts and nullify it, daring us to oppose them. I'm tired of this. We can't win if you let your other, the other team run the ball down your throat every down. So here's Governor Huckabee addressing this. Let's pick up where we left off last second. Today, we want to remind nine people wearing black robes who were never elected to anything, who were appointed to their positions, not elected to them. We need to remind them that they are only the Supreme Court, not the Supreme Branch of Government. And further, 
They are most certainly not the supreme being from which all law ultimately emanates. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to say that there is no responsibility for the executive and judicial and the legislative branches to capitulate their powers that are equal to a judicial branch that has decided that it somehow has taken upon itself the role, the right, and the responsibilities of all three branches. Because it doesn't have that authority. From ninth grade civics, we should have learned that there are three branches of government and all of them are equal. I, I sometimes wonder, do some of the people who go to law school from the nice schools, did they ever learn that? Most of us learned it. What we have going on in America is the equivalent of a judicial coup d'etat, where judges believe that they can not only interpret law, but they can make it, and they can implement it. No, my friend. If the courts decide that something is unconstitutional, all they can do is render that as their version, their branch, their understanding. But in order to change the law to enable a different view, that has to go back to the legislature. And in order for it to be carried out, that has to go to the executive branch. It's time that we have people in the executive branch who recognize they have no responsibility they have no right just to carry out something because nine people in robes said they had to. Over the past 41 years, we have slaughtered 55 million babies because nobody had the courage to stand up and say the courts don't have a right to order the slaughter of unborn children. Freeze it it's for a time. second. That start saying courts. You cannot prescribe such an order, not unless the legislature and the executive branch were to somehow come to the same immoral and ungodly conclusion that maybe you did. And the legislative branch has been usurped completely by such a notion. The president and the Congress are not required to defy natural law. They are not required, that is a key. required to redefine marriage. They are required to follow the will of the people, the Constitution, and the law that has given us the greatest nation on earth, a nation that we will lose if we turn our backs on our origins. There is no doubt in my mind that this country would not exist had it not been for the providential hand of God. And I'm also convinced that if we reject his hand of blessing, we will feel his hand of judgment. Freeze it. In my home state of Arkansas, <clears throat> a single circuit court judge representing one county defied the will of 70% of the voters who had enacted a constitutional amendment to affirm marriage as between one woman, one man, one judge, a local judge. He did it on a late Friday afternoon, so it was too late for someone to file an appeal. Not only did he render the decision, but he virtually said, <clears throat> go out and get married. <clears throat> and a number of people went and did that over the weekend because county clerks capitulated to a judge. I tell you, there is no basis in the law for one person to make such a decision that would not only change the law, but that would prescribe the fix for the change and to actually order it to be carried out, bypassing the other branches. I say it again. Judicial supremacy is a curse upon this great republic, and every freedom-loving citizen needs to understand that nothing threatens your personal liberty more than the notion that you would bow your knee to the court system apart from the ultimate rule of the Constitution and all of the branches of government, all of which are not there to tell you what you cannot do, but to guarantee the freedoms that you are always empowered to have. The Bill of Rights does not say what you can't do. The Bill of Rights says what the government can't do. 
And it's time for us, as an American people, to say to our own government, enough 